Hi, welcome to part 4 of the VMware View 4.6 tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be looking at configuring the View Connection Server. After installing View Connection Server, you can see it's placed an icon on the desktop. If we double click on that icon, we'll be taken to the administration page. Okay, so in the administration page, I'll just be logging in with administrator and my password. Okay, we're brought straight into the licensing section. So first up, let's go and install our licensing. So we'll just click edit license and in here we'll enter our serial number. After entering in your license number, just click OK. Okay, so now that we've got View Connection Server licensed, what we can do is move over into the server section Okay, so now we're going to add our vCenter servers. So let's just click on Add. And for our server name, just enter in the fully qualified domain name. And for our username, we'll put the domain slash the username. and description if you like. So this username has to have admin access into your vCenter server. So let's click OK. And as you can see the vCenter server is added here. And what we'll do is we'll just click on it again and go back to edit and we'll enable the composer. So let's click enable view composer. And let's click add. And for the domain name type in our domain name, username with the domain at the beginning and our password and click OK. So the vCenter connection server will talk to View Composer and what it will do it will allow it to make multiple desktops in vCenter. So let's click OK. OK so now that we've got our vCenter server set up. Let's just go into our view connection server. Click edit. Okay, so in here we'll see our HTTPS address or URL here. Uh, and that's what we're going to be connecting through to to launch our uh, view connection. Now here where we've got PCOIP secure gateway, this is grayed out because I've installed my view connection server on a Windows 2008 uh, 32-bit server. If you installed it on a Windows 2008 R2 64 bit server, you'll see that this is enabled. And uh, what you'll be doing here is installing or typing in your IP, your external IP address here, followed by the port 4172, just like you can see in the example. Uh, also, in the external URL here, you would be typing in your external DNS here. Um, because this is not set up for external DNS, I'm just going to leave it as the internal name for now and what we'll be doing is just clicking OK on that. Alright, so let's head over to the pools and what we'll do is we'll just create a new pool here. So let's click Add. Okay, I want to create an automated pool here and uh, we're going to get VMware View to create a few desktops. So let's just click Next. Now I'm going to create it as uh, dedicated and enable automatic assignment that means that when the user logs in, a machine will be dedicated to that user and only that user will be able to use that machine unless you go in manually and unassign that user from the machine. If you select floating, basically you have a pool of desktops and as the user comes in, it takes a desktop from the pool. Once the user logs off, the desktops return back to the pool for the next user. So the downside of using floating is that we can't save our settings on exit. Uh, with the dedicated mode, we can save our settings onto a separate volume, which I'll show you in a few steps. So, yep, we'll select dedicated and enable automatic assignment. Let's click next. Now, in the vCenter server settings, uh, we're going to be using View Composer linked clones. So, View Composer linked clones actually save a lot of space on the volume as opposed to creating full virtual machines. So, let's click next. Okay, so the pool ID, let's just type in here VMware view demo 
and for the display name we'll type in Windows 7 desktop. So VMware View Demo, this ID here, will actually display in your View Connection server uh, so that you can recognize the pool as VMware View Demo. When the user logs into the website, they'll be able to see which pools are available to them and in that case, they'll see this name here, Windows 7 Desktop. Uh, you can create folders if you have multiple pools. We're only going to be creating one pool, so I'm just going to leave it in the slash folder. And you can type a description here if you like. So let's click Next. So here we'll be keeping the default settings. There's just a few that I want to change. Uh, the remote desktop power policy. So for the remote desktop power policy, what I want to do is I want to have my machines always powered on. Uh, you can also select them to suspend or power off when the user logs off. Um, suspend is a good idea if you want to save on resources. Um, but for the demo, we're just going to have desktops are always powered on. So I'm going to select that. Uh, and I want to automatically log off the user after 30 minutes. And I want to allow the users to reset their desktops. So I'll say yes to that. Uh, I don't want to refresh the disk after the users log off. So I'm just going to keep that never. Um, default display protocol. Normally it would keep this as PCOIP. But as we don't have the security server, I'm going to be selecting Microsoft RDP here. Normally you would allow the users to choose the protocol um, unless you have a strict policy to only supply PCOIP or RDP. But in this demo we only have an RDP option so actually I'm going to be selecting no on this one and force them to use RDP. Adobe Flash quality, we can set the quality and the throttling here. Um, if you do not set it, it actually takes the settings of the browser. So some of the settings that you can select are low, medium and high for quality and for throttling conservative, moderate or aggressive. So I'm just going to keep them as default and I'll click next here. Okay, because we selected dedicated virtual machines in the previous steps, we have the option to select persistent disks. So for a persistent disk, that means that the Windows profile will be saved as the user logs off. So whether you refresh the operating system or recompose the virtual machines, um, the settings will always be saved. So we'll dedicate 2 gig of space for that and we'll give it a drive letter of D. Um, disposable file redirection, we'll, we'll keep that at 4 gig um, and it's on a non-persistent disk here. So as you can see on the right hand side, the disposable file redirection is basically for disposable files and the files will be automatically deleted when the user ends their session. So let's click next on this. Okay. So we're going to enable provisioning and we're going to stop provisioning on error. So as soon as we're finished with this wizard, the VMware View Connection Server will talk to Composer and start creating our virtual machines. Now in the naming convention, what I want to do is I want to give them a name of, of WKS followed by 01, 02, 03 and so on. So to have 01, 02, 03, we need to enter in a variable which is okay so this will allow us to have the WKIS 01, 02, 03 and so on. So check the manual for more variable configurations. Um, this is just one of many. So the maximum number of desktops that I want to provision at this time is just one just because I have limited space on the SAN. Um, but here we can type in 5, 10, 20, 30, whatever you like. Um, number of powered on desktops. So this will always keep one powered on. So as a user logs in, there will always be one to be assigned to that user. And we're not going to be provisioning desktops on demand. We're going to be provisioning all our desktops up front, which means as soon as we finish the wizard, the provisioning process will start straight away. So. In this pool, we'll have one desktop and let's click next. Okay, so now it's time to select our default Windows 7 image. So let's click Browse. Uh, parent VM, we'll click Browse. And here we'll select our Windows 7 machine. Let's click OK. And this is a snapshot of our base operating system. So we'll be using this snapshot to create our linked clones. So let's click OK. 
Okay, let's select a virtual machine folder. Let's click Browse. And we'll select VDI. This is where all the virtual machines will be placed. Now let's select our resource settings. We'll select our host or cluster. So we're going to select the VM Lab cluster, which consists of VM Cluster 1 and VM Cluster 2, one ESX and one ESXi server. And we'll click OK. And we'll select a resource pool for our virtual desktops. Should be the virtual desktops here. OK. OK, now it's time to select our data stores. So let's just click Browse next to data stores here. And we're just going to make sure that this option's ticked. Use different data stores for OS disks and view composer persistent disks. Because what we're going to do is install our OS disk, which is Windows 7, on the NetApp iSCSI LUN. And we want to be installing our profiles on the NetApp VDI profiles. So let's tick both of these data stores here. Okay, and for the NetApp iSCSI LUN, we want to make sure that we've selected OS disks. And for the NetApp VDI profiles, we want to select persistent disks. Okay, and for storage over commitment, I'm going to leave these as conservative. Um, please check in the manual under the resources section of the website www.sysadmintutorials.com to read more about what conservative, moderate and aggressive means. So I'm going to click OK here. And I'm going to click Next. Now for the domain, we've got in here our vmlab slash administrator user account and then the AD container is where we want to be placing our view desktops. So let's click Browse here. And this is your Active Directory tree here. And as you can see, I've created an OU called VDI Desktops. So we'll be placing all our desktops in there. And let's click OK. Now use Quick Prep is like similar to using SysPrep. So it's going to go through, do all the same steps as what SysPrep would do, but much faster. Otherwise, you can use SysPrep if you select this option here. Uh, you can also specify a power off script or post synchronization scripts. For this demo, we don't have any scripts, so I'm just going to be clicking Next. Now, here's a summary of all our settings here. I'm um, pretty happy with all these settings and I'm happy to proceed, so let's click Finish. Now, this is going to take a little while. Uh, as you can see, the pool is set up here. Um, and if we switch over to our vCenter server, we'll be able to see the tasks being performed down here. So you can see that my virtual machine is starting to clone here from the base. Uh, this will take some time, so what I'll do is I'll pause the video and we'll come back once this is complete. Okay, so we're back. And uh, what we can see here is that the workstation is actually completed. All the vCenter operations have completed. We can see our workstation is powered on up here. Okay, so now that the workstation's finished provisioning in vCenter, uh, what we need to do is entitle some users to have access to our pool. So let's select the pool, and we'll just click Entitlements. And here we'll click Add. So normally I'd create a group and add my users into the group for this pool, but for this demo, I'm just going to add Administrator. And click Find. And I'll just add the username here. We'll click OK. And I'll click OK again.